Jacqueline, talk to me about this. Senator Schumer expected to hold a test vote, adding pressure for lawmakers to reach an agreement. What is this vote going to reveal about the road ahead for infrastructure? This, I think, is going to reveal whether or not Democrats are in disarray as uh, um, our newspaper editor's headlines so often love to uh, <laughs> refer to. Uh, look, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has already missed the first deadline he set on this, which was uh, a deadline for last week having a test vote. and. Unfortunately, congressional negotiators are right back where we were a few months ago, Alicia. Lawmakers are unable to decide how they want to foot the bill. Remember, as you just noted, this is a two-track process. So the reconciliation bill, which Democratic senators are still hashing out, figuring out those details, uh, needs to be passed in tandem with the bipartisan bill. But lawmakers, despite months of negotiations, um, came out. Uh, last week, and, and Senator Rob Portman said explicitly on Sunday shows today that there are issues right now with a hundred billion dollar tax to empower the Internal Revenue Service to pursue unpaid unpaid federal taxes. This is a pretty big uh, problem facing uh, lawmakers right now. A hundred billion again would uh, needs to be taxed in order to foot this bill, which Republican lawmakers have insisted upon. But they also don't want to uh, repeal any of the taxes of the tax cuts passed under Trump four years ago. That means that lawmakers still need to find a lot of uh, additional money to pay for this package. And then on the other side of the coin on this, you have uh, centrist Democrats who are already opposing some of the more progressive climate provisions that have been included in the reconciliation package. So there's a lot that needs to be figured out right now. Fortunately, lawmakers do have two more weeks after this week before they go on recess. Um, we'll see if a vote manages to miraculously happen this week, though. Jackie, I love the complexity that you laid out there because it helps us explain why we keep coming back to Infrastructure Week over and over again and why Infrastructure Week is actually more like Infrastructure Summer. And Gabe, I also love that Jackie reminded us, as she always does, that there are congressional negotiators at these tables, right? It's not necessarily members of Congress sitting around debating this with each other. And yet you sort of have that action happening, right, where they're talking about how they're going to pay for this, what people are willing to concede. And then you have... President Biden, right, who has played a pretty active role in these negotiations up to this point. What role is he planning to play moving forward? Well, I think that's a yeah. very big question that we're going to see now for the for the coming few weeks. I mean, he is clearly someone who is working in tandem with Chuck Schumer, the Democratic leader, to try and force as much of this through as quickly as possible. Schumer has set this vote for this week. And of course, he's in regular contact with Biden about this. You know, Biden is someone who always says he loves to be at the table. He loves to work with the uh, Republican senators in addition to the Democratic ones. But I think that this week is, as as we've been teasing here, a sort of make or break one for this kind of uh, this kind of plan specifically, because there's only so much that Biden can do in terms of trying to find this extra revenue or this extra money that, that, that Republicans in particular are talking about as needing to pay for this first part of the actual infrastructure bill. But the reason that I say that is the overall plan here, the overall package that we're talking about on the second track is, of course, where a lot of his agenda, his overall domestic agenda, is supposed to come in here. So he has said over and over that he's willing to be at the table, but he's also trying to empower a number of Democratic allies of his to take this from here. But I think that we're going to find out a lot more, in other words, after Wednesday, over after the next few days. You know, senators keep saying, yes, we want to have this vote, but it's also a little bit of an artificial deadline to do this by Wednesday. Right. I mean, Jacqueline, just to sort of underscore some of what you have already said, you have the White House working with Republicans on the traditional infrastructure aspect of this package, bridges, roads, paying for it, as you said, the big sticking point. And this morning, Republican Senator Ron Portman pushed back against IRS enforcement as a way to pay for the plan. Take a listen. One reason it's not part of the proposal is that we did have pushback. Another reason is that uh, we found out that the Democrats were going to put a proposal into the reconciliation package, which was uh, not just similar to the one we had, but uh, with a lot more uh, IRS enforcement. So, uh, so that created quite a problem because the, the general agreement is that this is the bipartisan negotiated infrastructure package and that we will stick with that. Jackie, your sense of what other sticking points Republicans are showing concern about? It's really all well, with regards to these pay fors. Again, Republicans have insisted that the full package be completely paid for. Um, but uh, Republicans have balked at this IRS tax and, and the ability to empower the IRS to pursue unpaid federal taxes because they believe that it 
allows uh, the IRS too much power to scrutinize the finances of families and corporations. That is leaving lawmakers really scrambling to find alternative ways to pay for the infrastructure blueprint. But I think we've also heard in the background a frustration and a grumbling from Republicans uh, as Democrats uh, um, assemble the other track of the other plan and try to squeeze a lot of the provisions and measures that were left out of the uh, the, the bipartisan negotiation and, and now are being just repurposed in a different form in this reconciliation package. Um, I, I think that that's also where maybe some of these sticking points are emanating from. Um, but I think, you know, if a tax like this on that would empower the IRS to collect more unpaid federal taxes is what Repub- is the hill that Republicans are, are going to die on when it comes to this package. Uh, I think they're going to have a pretty hard time finding any points of, of compromise when it comes to enacting other taxes in order to to get this one trillion dollar package paid for. Gabe, you are both so smart, and I appreciate that you both really just dive into the minutia of these things and help us all understand it. So I'm going to ask us to zoom out and ask you, you know, we're just talking with Texas Democrats. They are on the Hill uh, talking with legislators about voting rights. That clearly is the other big policy question that is looming in this moment. Is there an interplay between these two, between the debate that they are having over infrastructure and the debate that is being had over voting rights? Oh, there's a massive interplay there, but let's not pretend that those are the only two things going on, by the way. There's also this whole pandemic. (laughs) That's getting, you know, not necessarily better in a lot of places right now. But in terms of voting rights, which is, of course, something that the White House is trying to focus on as well. Yes, uh, a lot of uh, Democrats, particularly on the Hill, have still been trying to pass their or trying to find avenues to pass their original voting rights plans. But uh, it seems fairly clear that those plans are not going to be passed with the 60 votes that would be needed to do that. As a result, there's a lot of talk about what kind of voting rights measures can be fit into the second plan here that we've been talking about, the broader plan that's likely going to pass or at least be put up uh, to pass via reconciliation, which is when, you know, just the Democrats would be voting for it. So that is running on a parallel track, as everyone on Capitol Hill likes to say right now. But in terms of the big picture, it's a, it's all one and the same, because every time something gets removed from one part of this negotiation, it gets thrown into the other part of the negotiation. So everything is very complicated, very intertwined. But a lot of Democrats in Capitol Hill are really trying to keep the focus on this voting rights fight for that specific reason, because they want to make sure that uh, people's eyes are not taken away from this, that they're not averted and focus too much on infrastructure, uh, because there still are plans to try and put some funding for states uh, or some sort of, you know, fairness measures, as they would call it, into the broader plan, uh, if that makes some sense. It does make sense. I think what I'm hearing is two separate tracks that happen to overlap. All right, Jacqueline and Gabe, thank you both as always. 